So do you want to get into the social structure, which we also kind of talked about? Yeah, let's get into the social structure. So basically, if you're talking about, well, purple worm and purple worm, the only thing they do, will ever do, is mate. And then lay eggs. And you're probably thinking, what about, like, the kids? Well, kids don't exist to them. They'll just leave when they lay the eggs. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're not smart enough yeah. to They don't even know what this. their kids and the, are. And the kids aren't smart enough to even know that they had parents. Yeah. They're just these mindless things, yeah. you know, eating and that would be a squishing around. baby purple worm. It's yeah, like true. It's a man-sized purple worm. Like well, bites. purple worms actually start very small. Like as big as your arm? I'm not exactly sure the actual size, but I know they start very small. And there's actually some variants that you can, um, that will be in, implanted into a host and eat their way out. Oh, God. But those are not the typical ones. But that's a good idea yeah, in the very that, least. Really um, and so they yeah. start out small and then they kind of just eat your insides that and get rock bigger. Rub? That's rock grub. Well, no, that rock grub, rock grub just goes to your heart and kills you. Why do they go to your heart? Bloodstream. Um, but. But the purple worms literally eat everything off your body and then and then leave. They're out. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, but baby purple worms, they'll just kind of go around and try to find a place that's home. And then they'll mark it with their stench. And purple worms don't really fight each other and mess with each other. If they smell another purple worm, they're like, oh, I'll just go this way. And they'll just turn and go a different direction. Which, uh, which we can talk about, like, how other c- civilizations are affected by purple worms. So, as we say again, they are natural disasters under the Underdark or even above. Them attacking on the surface is super rare, though. That means they're desperate and something bad is happening in the Underdark. That's mm. a cool thing. Like, saying, like, a demon horde is in the Underdark, purple worms will be sprouting up. Like, like, like pur- it's purple worms going through the surface is a sign of the apocalypse. Like, something really bad is going on the, in the Underdark that's driving them up. That's interesting. So, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, but in the Underdark, um, a lot of um, everyone really fears them. So they've spread purple worm mucus around their city so purple worms don't go there. So that's why you don't go to a drow city and every second okay. purple worms tearing them apart. So. Okay, so we're getting into that. All right, so all right, before I elaborate on that, societal structure, purple worm and purple worm, in general, is they're very solitary except when mating. Um, and the reason, and I'll, I'll say why they're solitary, and this will link to what you just said. So they have a pheromone that they secrete. And this, this, the purpose of the pheromone is to say other, hey, purple worm, I'm also a purple worm. Um, let's avoid each other. And so when they smell the pheromone, they say, oh, we don't want to like run into one another and start fighting. That, there's no reason. So we just avoid one another. And so like Ethan was saying, civilizations that live in the Underdark know this. And they will take this pheromone and basically cover their cities with it. And so when a purple worm gets close to a city, it will smell the pheromone and say, oh, that's a big, that's a big purple worm. I don't want to mess with him. That's a very big purple worm. <laughs> I'm, I'm going the other way. That guy's huge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. And that's, that's their whole, that's the whole dynamics there with purple worm to purple worm. So, uh what you had mentioned and what I just elaborated on is pretty good segue into enemies and allies. Yes. Okay. So to start out with en- enemies and allies, purple worms don't really have enemies or allies. They they eat. No. Everything. Yeah. So I'd say what we want to talk about here is just kind of what are the relationships with other creatures? So we mentioned one, which is they are, their relationship to civilization in the Underdark is just something to avoid, right? So the pheromones are put there purely to av- to keep purple worms out. They don't they don't want to have a relationship with them because that relationship will end in destruction. Um, and just to add on, they use the pheromones. Sometimes they also use magical wards to keep away purple worms. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, it just depends on kind of like what type of civilization you're dealing with here. But the pheromones are a pretty easy way to do it. So that's probably the most common. Um, so I have some uses of their body. There is one use. Can you make like cool purple worm armor? Look like pretty cool. You probably could, which would look awesome. Or like you could have a purple worm spear with like a stinger. Yes, that would be awesome. That would be insane spear. Fifty damage. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so what is typically known in the lore that purple worms can be used for is their blood is used a lot of times for magical ink. 
and it's normally so it's just to make like scrolls or something like that and typically those this magic is used for magic that deals with strength or constitution um and so that's just a that's more of a fun fact but it, it does Pretty affect cool society yeah. yeah you know that's that is really cool um i can tell you some things that might mess with a purple worm so let's okay. say a purple worm sprouts out of the ground but big talons comes in a rock. We'll just pick it up and eat it. So yeah, rocks are pretty fearless. However, that poison and that stinger is an that, issue. Yeah, the, a purple worm would fight the rock, and the rock would probably be like, "Oh, ow, you hurt," and drop them. Yeah, I don't think the rock would successfully kill the worm. Honestly, because rocks just don't do enough damage. I mean, can rocks think do, about that. Rocks do 50 damage. So that's like almost instantly killing an elephant, which has like 70. So but this is a purple worm. A, they cut purple worms barely do more damage because it can't swallow. So like a okay. purple worm does like 20 more damage. Their bite does still. Um, yeah, the bite still like, you know, yeah. it's kind of like what the cookie cutter does shark. still deal damage. Have you ever heard of those? Yeah, yeah. It's like kind of saws a piece out. The the rock, yeah, the rock would win, actually, now that I think about it, because they not only can deal the damage, and they not only have better stats, like they, they can basically defend anything. Um, they can pick the worm up, maybe, and drop it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and every cool. 10 feet is a D6, so if the rock can go... 120 just generally on its turn if it dashes straight up oh yeah God, that's 240 so that's 24 d6s of damage. it's a it's that's a, a lot of damage so if it does its thing dropping that's like yeah that's a lot and or it could just fly down attack and then swoop away which does provoke an opportunity attack but it doesn't give the worm its full turn because the worm can't attack unless the rock is right on it you know what I'm saying? So it could yeah. deal its damage, fly away, take the opportunity to attack, but then just wait and then do it again. Yeah, I mean, the worm could easily, both of them could easily escape each other. The worm can just go back down. Yeah, worm goes down, rock goes up. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. But um, a funny thing is, um, sometimes dragons get very ticked off at purple worms, especially like uh, deep dragons. Okay. Which are purple dragons or like underground dragons. Because they'll just come back to their horde and a purple worm will just break through the ceiling and start eating their horde. And they're like, get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get the hell out of here. And like, kind of but away. dragons are. So that that's funny. But they dragons also don't really uh, worry about them. Because they know that a purple worm isn't going to try to eat them because they're so big. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're a young or baby dragon. then I'm pretty sure even wormlings, they don't get really targeted by. They're tiny. Worms. Really? I'm pretty sure. Interesting. Something about them. Um, okay. So another thing that they kind of, another like effect they have on other creatures is they're known for interrupting and just kind of bursting into large underground battles, um, uh, which makes sense because if there's these loud sounds, that's so funny. The worm might, yeah. even if there are pheromones, the worm might be like, "Hey, listen, something's going on." And right. all all the other performs <laughs> were like. Bro, that's like <laughs> yeah, and it, and occasionally worms can be together uh, if they're all attracted to the same thing. So the pheromones really only work if there's no reason to go past there. You know what I mean? Yeah. If there's a reason to pass the pheromones, they will because they'll just do it. You know what I mean? They're not gonna. Yeah, they don't care. Yeah. But like that, that's kind of fun. Well, that's kind of funny. But I just imagine like drown like deep gnomes just like fighting each other, and then all of a sudden just the ceiling just erupts with like a purple worm just goes straight through, eating like. I don't know, like, four people. And then yeah. Just, I kind of feel like they could eat a lot, like, at least, like, eight people. Just if it just went straight down on, like, a horde of people. Oh, probably. It could ease a, a it, cluster. It, in the book, it says only one target. I'm like, that's bull crap. If there's two people, like, <laughs> right next to each other, you could easily just go nom. Yeah, oh, it doesn't say that? The way I think about it is it there's, like, a I think it's, like, a 10-foot diameter or something of its mouth, depending on its size. Oh, really? And the way I thought about it was anyone in that diameter will probably take this bite. You know what I mean? I thought it can only reach 10 feet, like, 10 feet reach. Normal. Yeah, but I I I could have swore somewhere there it gave a diameter of but just look up the diameter of the worm and the way I would homebrew it is anyone within that diameter it's gone they get attacked they get yeah, eaten they and they have to make the deck save yeah which is um, awesome but that's really cool I actually didn't know that they'll just interrupt <laughs> battles both sides are like oh we gotta run guys <laughs> run for the hills. Uh, this, all the this happened in the Hobbit 
if you remember, in the extended version. Yeah, in, in the Hobbit for the Five Armies, they didn't really kill everyone. They no, so just... the worms were used by the orcs. the orcs, which I don't know how they used them. Um, now, I actually will talk just in a second about how about they how too. they can use be used. But um, I thought it was kind of interesting. Now, I will say it was kind of controversial for me because they're called wereworms in the books. And wereworms, it was literally like a single – it was mentioned once. And it's unknown whether they even exist in Tolkien's world in Middle-earth, yet the Hobbit included them. And it's like – Well, I mean it's a cool way to introduce an army. You know? like, that's instead of true. Instead of just marching down the hill, they just freaking burst from the ground and the giant worms. That's, that's true. Really I'll take it. Too. Yeah. They were pretty cool. Yeah, so um, now what we can talk about um, – Unless you have any more. I do have more for enemies oh. and allies. All right. Oh, you think I'm done. Oh, I actually have one more, too. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to do it? All right, I'll go. Yeah, um, so another one I have is regarding their eggs. And this, this is a pretty big one. It's a symbiotic relationship that the purple worms have with other creatures in that when purple worms are sitting in their eggs, you know, little baby ones, um, other creatures will come to them and protect the eggs. And these creatures are typically giant spiders and other predators that use the eggs as bait and will eat anything that comes to the eggs. Because eggs are very vulnerable, right? They're just this food source, basically. Well, why don't the spiders eat them? Well, because I don't think spiders would eat the eggs. I think they eat, like, the blood or they eat, like, living things. They eat how spiders kill people, or not people, but, like, other insects. It's like, theoretically, if there's a giant spider, they would bite you, and then they would... They're, their venom would inject inside, and, and if there's enough, your insides will literally liquefy. Yeah, we talk about this in yeah. the Dryers episode. That yeah. You're, that, yeah, you're just a smoothie at that point. Yeah, you're literally they, a smoothie. They slurp you up. Um, but yeah, so that's a symbiotic relationship. They protect the eggs, and in return, they get to eat their intruders. And bam, symbiotic relationship. And the worm doesn't even know it's happening, of course. They just they just do it. They just sit there. Um, purple worms are also known to be used by dwarves for tunnel building. Um, How, uh, yeah, no, wait, that was mine. No, was like, oh, that was yours. That was yours. It's freaking okay. sick. It's like dwarfs are like, looks at all the miners. They all drop their pickaxes and just throw throw stuff out like the wall. Yeah, no, it seems like a great way to you know build a build a tunnel down to the eighth level. You know, down to bedrock. Minecraft reference. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they're never completely tamed and never have been, nor can they be. Because they just can't be, um, uh, supposedly. Although I will say that that's what it says in the lore. But it's if they have an intelligence of minus five, I feel like taming them might not actually be super hard. I guess the only reason that they're di- they're impossible to tame completely. They don't know what it is. Yeah, they don't even like they don't it does they don't they can't even memorize a command. You know what I mean? Like they can't. Well, they don't even comprehend like anything. They're like, oh, sound food. Like I was gonna put one of mine. It's like some. Some armies literally ride them into battle because they'll okay. put, like, a bunch of noise. So let's say the underground battle, they'll launch rocks to the other side, and the other side's like, what are you doing? And then the other army approaches on purple worms, them, like, on the side of the purple worm with swords and bows, and the, the purple worm just glide as archers just, like, rain. That's awesome. That's very Dune as well. The, yeah, the Dune, yeah no, I really thought of Dune, how they, like, just hick a ride with a pickaxe. They're just, like... The Fremen, like writers well, but yeah. how do you like stay on when you're under sand though like, you wow. don't oh so the way it works in dune um i believe this is just from the book i don't know if this is in the movie uh, the movie i mean there's just so much in the book we only saw it once in the movie spoiler oh true that's true the movie yeah this is a kind of a spoiler for the dune movie but the book has been around forever you should know um but so the way that the fremen writers ride the worms without going underground is they hook the worms and this is how they stay on and but the hooks also pull back on their like um they're like rivets so like their their skin basically it pulls back on the skin and it exposes their soft skin under their hardened skin and when the worm feels that their soft skin is exposed it naturally keeps that soft part away from the earth does that make sense so the way that they steer them is basically they'll pull on part of the skin and whichever part of the skin gets pulled the worm will naturally 
bring it to the surface as far up as it can. And so it's like if you pull the left, you're going to move right. You know, if you pull right, you're going to move left. And both and they're go- and you're going to stay on the surface as well. Does that make sense? Because if the worm were to burrow with its skin not protecting it, it would hurt it. And it would get like stuck in its skin and it would be bad. So this so the worm being mindless just naturally feels the sensation of its skin being pulled and doesn't go under the ground. That's really interesting. I'm not sure how you do that to a purple worm though. It's literally armor. Oh, I'm not actually, saying you, you would be able to do it. You actually can. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Um so yeah, the dwarves do that. Uh another thing that people kinda use with worm I will Another thing people use worms for, and I don't, did you mention this? They will lure the worms towards their enemies, and then the worms will just obliterate them. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I kind of said a special way. It's like they'll put troops on the worms. So when they oh. go through, like, archers will be yeah. firing. But yeah, no, they'll, they'll, <laughs> I just think it's so funny. It's just like, oh, we, we outnumber you. It's like, okay. Well, what are you going to do <laughs> Not for long? Okay. Well, you could just have, like, a lone terrorist who, like, Oh, God. Who just is taking that risk of carrying around these pheromones and leading a purple worm to a city that they want to oh, mess purple up. Purple worms. Yeah, or multiple. Yeah, that would be so cool. so that's something they can be used for, and you can you can manipulate worms by kind of using the pheromones and stuff. But magic users also can manipulate worms with because they're not they're not easy to manip- like if you use enchantment magic and stuff, you can manipulate worms. And so that's a common thing. I wouldn't say it's common, but it's something magic users can do without – it's not relatively difficult. It, it's not, like, super difficult. It can – it's not easy, but it's not hard either. It just can be done. Um, but typically whenever – this is kind of in the lore and known. It's, it's said that whenever you use a purple worm for anything, it's bound to go horribly wrong and end in disaster. Well, no dip. I mean, how are you going to control it if it just goes yeah. right? You're like, oh, no, go the other way. Because <laughs> like, it is just like moving this uncontrolled. It's like the Hulk. You know what I mean? Like the Hulk just does its his stuff. Well, imagine like you're trying to control something like the size of the house, but like it just randomly moves places and it can just go go in the ground and like move and then it pops up in another part of the city or something like that. Yeah. It just like goes around. It's unpredictable. Yeah, That's the very main. Very unpredictable. It's, it's unpredictable yeah. and very destructive. And those are not too good. You don't want to put those two words together. Yeah, no. Bad for business. But that is, I believe, all the enemies in that. Or, that, that was actually kind of long for enemies and allies normally. Yeah, I mean, they're not. None of which of them are enemies or allies, but they're more of just like. How they interact with the world. With the how, world. Yeah, how the world interacts with them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're, 